Hello and welcome back. So, in this video we're going to render out small H.264 files for our clients to watch. This means that these files are not only small in file size but also smaller in resolution than our source 5.7k material and they will also have a look and clip metadata baked into the image. So, here's our old timeline. Let's start by duplicating that by just Alt dragging it here in the project tree like such enable edit and now let's rename this and call it shiny colored okay and now let's apply our look go to color fix and we could now of course dial in some kind of look here using the color tools in scratch but I'm very lazy, so let me just go to the lot menu, hit load, and choose uh, this look table. I could use the lot cycler to, you know, go through all the other lots in this folder and choose a different one. But right now, let's stick with that. Looks good. Bypass. This is without the lot, and this is with the lot. Looks good to me. Now we want to copy this look to all the clips because all the other clips here, as you can see, are still log. So let's hit copy here, go to the next clip and hit paste. And I will just leave everything as is right now in this menu and hit paste forward. So everything gets pasted forward, double confirm to all shots in our timeline, just like that. Okay, that looks good. So now that we have applied our look, our files look good and we can proceed to the render tab where we still have our two nodes here. Let me quickly get rid of them because first what we want to do is scale everything down. As you can see, our current main output node or timeline is 5.7K and we want to create our small H.264 files in HD resolution. How do we do that? Well, we click the plus icon and add a transformer node. Now the transformer node by default inherits everything from the upstream node, so it's pretty much the same but we are going to change this to 1080.23. And as you can see already here in the thumbnails, what we've just created is a center crop. If I double click this node, I am in color fix, but as you can see the mini timeline now turned yellow. So this indicates that you're on an output node and everything you're doing now is happening basically to the entire timeline. And you can see we have just a center crop. Here's our main output node note that we're in the outputs tab here and here's our transformer note and it's just cropping which is of course not what we want so instead we would select our transformer note go to the format settings and here under input position and size we select fit width to scale everything down and if we now double click it yeah this is what we want going from 5.7k down to HD Okay, so now that we have that, what we would like to add is a metadata burn-in. So let's hit plus and add a burn-in. Now, as you can see, the burn-in node has a bunch of tabs in here, which we can configure. However, here it really makes sense to enter color fix with the burn-in node. So let's double click that. And again, we are in color fix. Let me get rid of the scopes and zoom in a little bit and now we can display metadata like for instance here in the text field I can enter file name double point and now insert metadata our known hash codes again so let's choose source name here and it gets displayed there let me select a better font maybe Arial where do we have it here we go that looks much better maybe make it a little bit bigger yeah that looks good okay that's the file name let's create another line and resolution that will be HD but we can also create new text boxes like that and position those down here and inside a um, source time code oh and everybody that this is timecode okay 
maybe we want to center that just like that next we can go to the global tab oops sorry to the guides tab here we go and we can display guides like cinemascope and we can enable blanking if we want that or action and title saves if we have and so on actually let me move textbooks number one a little bit inside here that looks better okay and we can of course uh, add more text boxes and use more metadata we can even you know if we go to the metadata stack I can see that this clip was shot at a uh, temperature of 6100 Kelvin so let me create a new text box place it right here make it right side aligned and choose hashtag MD for metadata which means camera specific metadata here add these square brackets and inside put in the item that I want to display which is RDD18 come on RDD18 dot camera dot white balance and it displays 6100 Kelvin very nice Okay, so this way we can really add anything in here. We could also add, oh, let's say, not color temperature, but we would like to uh, camera. And this would be MD Pro Apps. dot manufacturer and after that we would make a space and hashtag MD square brackets pro apps dot model name and now we have the full camera name in here okay this is pretty cool so let's leave it at that for now go back to the render tab and after our burning node we will put in the H.264, H.265 encoder node. Here in the format settings, we will choose, well, yeah, we'll keep it at H.264, quality normal, that's good, fast start. Maybe the bitrate will rather dial down to, hmm, what should we do? 3200 maybe. Variable bitrate for audio channels. Format will be, yeah, we'll leave it to MP4. Okay. Uh, only thing that's left is the file name. We will again just use S name for that, you know, and uh, maybe create a folder uh, online underscore h264 like that, and have Scratch render all the separate clips based on their source name inside that folder. Hit OK. Now, before we render this out, what we want to do is save our output tree here because obviously we don't want to recreate it for every new timeline that we create. So the first thing you do is you select your main output node like that and then down here in the lower left corner uh, specify your template name uh, ProRes Raw Dailies and hit save. And now if we you know create a new timeline let me quickly load some footage in these clips again we can just recall it from this drop down, hit apply, and there's our output tree with our H64s. And even better, we can close the project, go to our project settings, and then set the uh, default output template right here. So now, uh, as you will notice, all the existing timelines that I had in here do not have it. However, from this point onwards, when I create a new timeline through the add button here, it will already have the tree attached to it. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Okay, well, and with that, we just have to render out our output node back here. Let's just do that, hit render node, take a quick look at the render queue. Okay, render's running, I can click continue, and as always, work in any other timeline 
that I need to work in. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next and last video of our ProRes RAW workflow series, we'll take a look at working in ACES with ProRes RAW files, which will be very interesting. See you there. Bye.